Welcome to This Week at LSU Units for February 22nd. I'm Alexis. This week, we'll sit down for a visit with SGA President Alex Moore. We'll take a look at the RideTech program's new equipment and how the YouTube craze Harlem Shake found its way into the Lady Bengal locker room. X-rays have come a long way since the process was discovered in the late 1800s. Digital equipment is now the norm in the industry, and LSU Unis' program is keeping pace. Adelaide takes a look. The Radiologic Technology Program is excited to show off its new machine. The new direct digital equipment now allows the program to train students on every machine they might find in the workplace. So we actually have the five main areas um, going from the oldest way to the newest way as far as getting the students experience in these uh, particular areas. The National Board, the ARRT, the American Registry of Radiologic Technologists, still wants us to cover these areas because uh, they're still evaluated on them on the board exam. The new equipment is comparable with what students will find in their clinical settings. This equipment is more like the equipment you, we use in clinical. The other room is not up to date. It includes like processing the film with chemicals and that's like obsolete now. The new digital equipment was funded through grants by the Board of Regents, Coral Perkins Education Act, and student technology fees. We needed to be more consistent with the equipment that's being used by our students out there in the clinical settings. So uh, we went out and uh, tried to figure out what, that, what we could do uh, and also got excellent feedback from our advisory board as well as uh, uh, the program at Northwestern State University who also has this same piece of equipment to stay with state-of-the-art technology and that's what our students need. We do cover the um, technology in the classroom and in clinical but we needed it in the lab as well so in order to be consistent we did everything we can the last three years to finally get it here. The RADTEC program just completed reaccreditation and continues to be one of the top programs of its kind in the state. Back to you Alexis. Thanks Adley. The first round of financial aid refund checks will be in the mail to students soon. The process can start until after the 14th day of class. This is so the financial aid office can verify students are actually attending class and are eligible for a refund. Once verification is completed, the process moves to the business office. As the business office takes over and they start verifying information as to addresses, the balance is old is correct, so forth and so on. Once that's finished, then that information is sent to LSU Baton Rouge. LSU Baton Rouge physically prints the checks for us. Once the checks are printed, they're sent back to the business office. Then the business office pulls out the checks that were the university's old money and our bingo village. Once the student is verified that they're clear, the check is then mailed to the student directly on the address. The address that we use is the address that the admissions office has. The whole process can take up to two weeks. The first disbursement was made this week. Others will follow. And email notifications are sent out to the students in regards to their financial aid and in order when it's posted and when it's the disbursement made, but that doesn't necessitate that a check's here. That's just letting you know that the money's on your account and we are requesting a check. Can I give a definitive date when the check is going to be here because we're dependent upon LSU Baton Rouge to print the checks and to mail them back to us. And when there's a large quantity such as the first posting, it may take a couple of days longer than, say, two or three months down the road when the turnover was a little bit quicker. If a student did not get a notice of disbursement, that means financial aid is working on processing their aid. For info on what may be delaying the refund process, please contact the financial aid office. Award-winning filmmaker Pat Meir visited campus as part of an Oshner Lifelong Learning Institute event. Meir and French film director Jean-Pierre Bruno visited with guests before showing clips from his new film, Sushi and Sauce Piquant, which features the life of guitar legend and Eunice area native Jerry McGee. McGee is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and has played with the likes of Chris Christopherson, Barbara Streisand, and Elvis. Mir said he has had to tweak his style to make his work attractive to younger generations. You, do. you know, you have, to, you have to pace it into a place where uh, that, it does, that it does grab a younger, a younger audience too. 
and sometimes it, it, it means uh, doing things that may be a little gimmicky, and, and you're very much aware that whatever you do that's a gimmick will be out of style. In, in fact, you look back, I look at a film that I did, uh, Anything I Catch, the hand fishing store I shot in 88, and there's a, a page turn. At the time, that was the no, most newfangled thing that they had. It was brand new. When I look at it now, I say, oh my God, it dates it. So these things will date it, but so be it. If the point is, is that we're on this earth for, for a certain amount of time, and you're trying to reach an audience with your stories. And after all, that's all I am as a storyteller. And that's what I, you know. Sushi and Sauce Picant was screened for the first time earlier this month as part of the Cinema on the Bayou Film Festival, an event started by Mir eight years ago. The festival features screenings of over 30 films and was held at locations around Lafayette. Students from several organizations volunteered their time at the Cachada Farmers Market and first annual gumbo cook-off in Elton. The group helped out with different jobs around the event. We caught up with SGA President Alex Moore and asked her what the student government has been working on this year. So far this year, um, SGA, we have hosted a few events um, here on campus, um, but also other things like tailgating at the Chancellor. Um, we sell football tickets during the fall. Um, and also, not only that, but we've represented LSUE um, on many different levels, including a community level, a state level, and then coming up, um, we'll actually be representing LSUE on a national level in D.C. Um, but we've done other things as far as being on committees um, that definitely affect students, um, different things like student activities and student life, um, different things like tuition, and so there's a lot of, a lot of um, inside work that a lot of people don't know that we do, but um, that are important. The Harlem Shake is a current YouTube sensation with schools, military groups, offices, and others making their version of the 30-second video. LSU units quickly jumped on board. Lady Bengal basketball student assistant and our sports anchor, Matthew Barry, got the team behind the project. I was just watching some YouTube videos one day and came across a group of guys that did a Harlem Shake video, and I never had heard the song before, so I... I thought I'd look it up and see what it was all about, and as the week went on, more and more videos were coming around, so I figured if this is going to be one of the big YouTube videos coming around, I might as well do one. So I pitched the idea to some of the girls on the basketball team, and they, they really bought into it, so we decided to make one. We had some free time on a Saturday, and we ended up uh, making a pretty good video. At press time, the video had over 5,000 views and had been watched by people in 37 countries. To view the video, search YouTube for Lady Bengal Basketball Harlem Shake. The LSU system began working toward LSU 2015, an effort to build a single statewide globally competitive LSU. The first meetings of the LSU Transition Advisory Meeting have taken place over the last few weeks. A 10-member panel is tasked with providing information to the LSU Board of Supervisors to facilitate the reshaping of the LSU system. The team will present their first report to the board on March 15th. Now, let's take a look at some important upcoming dates. Now, let's take a look at sports. Lita Palitopoulou, a native of Greece, had a career night with the Lady Bengal basketball team this week. Her 32 points included eight three-pointers to help push the Lady Bengals to a 71-49 win over Delgado. We caught up with Lita and Coach Michael Berry. What was different between last night's game and the way you've played in prior games this season? We have five games left, and the last two or three games I haven't been playing the way I'm capable of playing. So I want to get out and get the W. I thought Lita did a great job, especially early, hitting a lot of threes for us that kept us in the game, uh, gave us a lot of momentum, and I think uh, it's inspired our team to be able to beat Delgado last night. And uh, she was one, one three off from actually tying our all-time career uh, single game three-point uh, record. So I thought she just played a tremendous game and helped us got that win last night. At any time during last night's game, did you realize that you were close to breaking the three-point record? No, I didn't know, and what I care about is that we won, and I know that I was close to the record, but I don't really care if I can break it or not. I just want to win the next four games. Well, I knew, you know, I knew that uh, uh, Lita had the capability of, of 
breaking that record sometime this year because she can shoot the three really well. Uh, she had a close game at Meridian a few weeks ago where she hit a number of threes. And um, when she hit the first two last night, um, it, she, I knew she was going to get back in rhythm. She hadn't been shooting real well the, uh, a couple games before that, but uh, last night she, uh, she showed that she's back on track. And if she continues to do that our last four games, we're going to be in great shape. Earlier this month, the Lady Bengals, with help of Bengal Village, raised over $600 for breast cancer research in the first ever Play for K game. Softball has been juggling their schedule around after rains made conditions too poor to play. The Lady Bengals are on an 11-game win streak. Uh, season's going well. We've only lost to one team all season, and we lost to them twice. Our record right now is 16-2. Um, we seem to be playing better every week. Um, you know, the girls are really working hard, and you know, things are starting to come around. And I believe this team, uh, you know, has the potential to do what uh, the past teams have done. Baseball dominated play early in the season, cruising to a 9-0 start, but dropped two games this week on their first road trip of the season to Pearl River. They'll be at home for the next 15 games starting this Friday night against North Central Texas College. That's it for sports. Back to you, Alexis. Thanks, Matthew. The LSUE Performing Arts Series will host the Savoy Family Band as the final event on their 2012-2013 calendar. <laughs> The band will play at the Liberty Center in downtown Eunice at 6.30 p.m. on February 28th. LSU Eunice students are admitted for free. General admission is $5. That's it for this week at LSU Eunice. We'll be back next week with another look at what's happening on campus.